this uh, um, very recent work by me and uh, Thomas Brasselton and, and Stephen McKean. And it's just, uh, it's not like a big paper, it's just like a little nice formula we found and I think it's uh, worth sharing. So the title is formulas for the A1 degree. Um, and as I said, this is joined with um, Thomas and uh, Stephen. So um, let me tell you what I wanna do. So for the whole paper, um, we will look at, for the, whole, for the whole talk, we will look at um, an endomorphism of AN. And we will assume that it only has isolated zeros. So the, the zero scheme is zero dimensional or equivalently, you could um, say that F1 through Fn, this ideal generated by them is a complete intersection. Um, and uh, what I want to do today is I want to tell you a nice formula for um, uh, the a one degree of this map. So find um, a simple algebraic formula. Formula for the a one degree of f. So I should maybe tell you what this is. What do I mean by this? So let me give you the definition. What I mean by that? Of course, we need um, Morel's a one degree. I, I'm sure you're all you're all familiar with that um, with that, but let me just write it down. So this is a map from homotopy classes of motivic spheres to to themselves to the growth and the grid ring of K. We will we will actually not need it a lot, so. Um, but I'm, I'm sure you all know what it is, but just let me say what, what this growth and degree of K is. Um, so this is the growth and degree ring of K and the elements are um, non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form when you do a group completion of those. So um, you can write down generators for this. Um, so just that you know if those weird symbols appear, what I mean, there was other rank one um, uh, non-degenerate symmetric bilinear forms, which look like this. So this is the form that sends x comma y to a x y. So this is a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form, at least um, when a is a unit. So a is a unit. In K, K is a field. Maybe I should say that. K is a field. All right. So um, whenever those appear, those are symmetric bilinear forms. You can always diagonalize such a form, and so you can write them as a side direct sum of those. Uh, but okay, so that's where we want to calculate. And now what I can do is I can um, define a, a local degree. This is analogous to, to the classical case where you can write the Brouwer degree as a sum of local degrees. You can also write this a one degree here um, as a sum of local degrees. Um, Sorry, do you have any assumptions on the characteristic or on the perfectness of the field? Um, no. Okay, just any field. Yeah, so okay. maybe, maybe we should Maybe we're on the safe side if it if the characteristic is not equal to two. Maybe for later results. So maybe let's assume. Thank you. Maybe maybe let's just assume that the characteristic of k is not equal to two. But um, 
especially the per perfect misassumption I don't want to make. Um, okay. You will see in, in a second why. Um, okay, yeah, so and since we're talking about characteristic not two, we could also view this as quadratic forms. Maybe this is shorter to write down. So I said, I want to write this as a sum of, um, of local degrees. So let me give you the definition of, a, of the local degree. This is due to uh, Jesse Kass and Kirsten Wickergren. Um, so let uh, X be um, an isolated zero of, I'll, I'll let me go back to my map from AN to, to AN. Because certainly locally, this looks like a map from AN to AN. Um, but in the end, I want to define local reason here. So let me just say it like this. Um, then uh, uh, find a um, Zariski neighborhood U of X um, such that if I intersect F minus one of zero with U, I only get X. So the only zero in this neighborhood is X. And then just like the definition of the local Brouwer degree, what we can do is um, we could, can um, look at the following map. So I want to take the degree later. So I start with Pn, Pn minus one. Then um, I can look at the, the collapse map. So I collapse everything. So my An sits in a Pn and I collapse everything but, but x. Um, but this is by excision the same as u, u minus x. So let me make this a little smaller. Um, now I can apply my map F and I go to a n k, a n k minus zero. And this is again a m p n k, p n minus one k. And I take the degree, the a one degree of this, and this is what I want to call the local degree. So degree at x, a1, f, called the local a1 degree. And now I can say what I actually mean by um, degree of f. I just want to sum up all the local degrees at the zeros. So degree a1 f should just be, I sum up over all x such that f of x is equal to zero. And of course, I still assume that f only has isolated zero. So this makes sense. And uh, I want to find a formula for this. And we probably have time in the end uh, because this is a really long session. So I, I can also. Uh, show you an application of this formula. So also Kass and Wickelgren define a, an Euler number um, as a sum of, of, of local degrees. So with, if you have a nice formula for, for this, you can compute Euler numbers. But I will define this later so everyone knows what I'm talking about. Let me first um, give you the formula we found. So um, I'll start with uh, reviewing different formulas for this. So what kind of formulas do we have? So um, there's a paper by uh, Kazanav um, who found a formula um, for the A1 degree of a map from P1 to P1. So really um, this A1 degree when N is equal to one. Um, and this is without taking like doing um, summing up local degrees. This is just really a, a formula for the degree. So let me say maybe global formula. Uh, 
I will also review what this is um, after I give you the overview over all those uh, formulas. So um, let me just write down the word Bezusian. It's because it was Bezu who uh, assigned a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form to a rational function. And Kazana found this formula and showed that this is actually a formula for the A1 degree of such a map. Okay. Um, so I already said that uh, Jesse Kass and Kirsten Vickeren defined this local degree and they also found a formula for the local degree. Um, when the zero I was talking about here, so I took an isolated zero here, if this is a, a K rational point, then they found a formula. So we have a formula for this, whatever we have K rational points. So Kass, oh, sorry. Um, this is done in their um, EKL, EKL paper, um, also called EKL form. Why is that? This was pretty much already known classically, um, namely Eisenbutt and Levine, that's E and L, and uh, independently Kim Shavili, that's K, um, they found a, a formula for the local Jacob Brower degree. And this formula was uh, just taking the signature of a certain um, symmetric bilinear form. And then Kasten Vickergren took this symmetric bilinear form and found, well, this is actually already a formula for the, for the a, local A1 degree. And that makes sense because taking the signatures over the real numbers should really give you the, the classical results over the real numbers. So, um, but I don't wanna review this. I just, uh, this formula today, I'm just telling you that it exists. Um, so we can compute whatever this uh, should be, whenever we only have K points, but we can do a little better. Um, there's a paper by a bunch of people who generalized this. Let me just write them down. So um, they, they show that this formula basically also works for, um, points where the residue field is uh, separable over the, the ground field. Um, okay. For local. For um, isolated or for, for X, a zero with K of X separable over K. And this is basically, we have our equal EKL formula and then we take the, the field trace. So um, now we can compute this whenever we have separable field extensions. Um, but now what I wanna talk about today is this work with Thomas and uh, Stephen So um, I want to present you a formula for the A1 degree of F. Um, um, uh, for F still only has isolated zeros and uh, without, this works without any restrictions on the residue fields of the zeros. So that's what I wanna talk about. And by the way, this also gives you a, a formula for the local degree whenever you have an arbitrary uh, residue field. You don't even need to know the, the zeros here. So this gives you a formula for the local A1 degree without any restrictions and for the sum of all of those. Okay, so that was a long introduction. So, um, let me tell you a little bit about this because this was the whole inspiration for our formula. So. Okay. 
So we have this rational function. So um, let me just write x for x1 over x0. And let me introduce a second variable, y, y1, y0. Then um, this was defined by Bizu, so let me call it this for Bizu. Um, this is f1 of x, f0 of y minus f1 um, of y, f0 of x divided by x minus y. So um, this I could just write as some coefficients bij x to the i, y to the j. And this is also symmetric because this is symmetric in, in x and y. So this is in k, x, and y. And I will get a matrix bij. And it turns out, um, I already said it was symmetric. So this defines a symmetric bilinear form and it's also non-degenerate. So this is uh, the ground matrix of a um, non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. And um, Kazanov shows, well, this is actually the A1 degree. So A1 degree of F, where F is now this here is, let me do brackets for class. So this is the class of this form defined by this matrix in GW of K. So um, let's compute an example to see how it works. Let um, F0 be two X and F1 be x squared minus y squared. So uh, what is this? This is um, the real and imaginary part of x plus i, y squared. I, at some point, I had to compute this. So that's why I'm taking this as an example. So let's try to compute the um, degree of this. So we need to compute this um, resolution. So this would be x squared minus one times two y minus y squared minus one times two x uh, divided by x minus y. So what do we get? We should get two x y plus two. So our matrix B i j would be, um, we have a two here and a two here um, this two comes from here, this two is this two, and zero is here. So as a form, this is already diagonal. So if I write this in those brackets, this gives me a two plus two. And one can actually show that in growth and degree, this is the same as one plus one in growth and degree. So this is a really nice, simple formula. Um, and our formula will look similar. But before we get there, I need to do some preparation. Okay. Um, so what I want to talk about now is uh, about some work by Shea and Storch. Um, they show a duality for complete intersections. Um, so we assume we have, again, a complete intersection F1, 2, Fn. And here, like this. So uh, I need to write down some definitions. Um, and they define two endofunctors. Um, let me call the first one uh, f from finitely generated k algebras to 
an end of end of functor to to here that sends uh, a to a tensor a over k and the other one that sends a to home k home k a k into a and they also um, show that there's, this is not hard to show, that there is a natural isomorphism between those two functors. Let me call it uh, psi, like this here. And um, it looks like, like this. So it sends A tensor A to home, A home. So what does it do? It sends, uh, it sends an element here to, well, phi is sent to phi applied to a times b. And um, this is a natural isomorphism. This is not hard to show. Um, OK, so we'll need this one here later. Um, and we need a second definition, namely, um, let me look at this tensor product here. And uh, let's take the multiplication map, I just call it mu. Like this. Um, and it turns out it's, it's kind of easier to calculate if I identify the left-hand side of this with, I just, introduce new variables, so x1, xn, and y1, yn. And I want to look at the kernel of this map. Um, and it's easy to see that this is generated by um, xj minus yj. Well, this would be xj tensor 1 minus 1 tensor little xj after this identification. So this is generated by those. Um, right. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to write an element in, in, in the kernel of the multiplication, namely the following, fi of x1 through xn minus fi y1 through yn. So those fi, should, you should think of them as those. We'll take, those will be those guys here from our complete intersection. Um, so this is in the kernel, obviously. So I can write it as a sum delta ij um, xj minus yj, j is equal to one to n, because the kernel is generated by these guys like this. So soon the notation will be will be will be done and, and you'll see wh wh where I'm getting at. Let me define Q to be kx1 through xn over f1 through fn and um, let rho be the quotient map. like this. Um, and now, delta is supposed to be the image of the determinant of those delta ij's. Um, so let me write rho tensor rho to be completely precise. So where does it live in q tensor q? So those delta ij here, they are, of course, in k x1 through xn, y1 through yn, or just an element in, in here. Am um, I right that they are not uniquely defined? Ah, thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. They are not uniquely um, defined. That is right. Um, I'll get back to that ah, right now, actually. So um, 
maybe I should really state this since you pointed out. Um, so here's the theorem of, of Schierstorch, this duality. So what we actually want to do is we want to define a duality on here, which gives us a, a symmetric bilinear form um, using this guy here and, and, this, uh, or, and this element. So, um, Um, they show, do they sh I think they show that this is an independent, this result really should be independent of, of this, just uh, this delta in the end. Um, and, um, but their main result is, um, so we have this complete intersection f1 through fn, um, and then they show that, so this psi q of delta, so let me, let's, let's check what this is. This uh, psi q um, was a, this um, natural isomorphism, or this was this isomorphism of k algebra from here to here. So if A is Q, our delta lives in here. So that's good. So what we get is um, an element in here. So this is from a morphism from here into Q. So what do they show? Uh, they show is that this actually defines an isomorphism, not only of K algebras, but also of Q modules. So this is uh, clearly a Q module. So what is the Q module structure on here? I'll do this in a different color. So I don't A times phi is just phi of this. This is my Q module structure. And this is actually an isomorphism of, of Q modules. And uh, uh, let me just say the third thing. They also um, show that this delta is the same as tau of delta. What is the tau? This is the one that swaps the two components. So tau is from Q tensor Q to Q tensor Q, A tensor B tensor B tensor A. So as a corollary, we get, so I'm not proving this, but here um, I'm stating the corollary. As a corollary, I can write down a, a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. So let me call it phi. Um, what does it do? It sends a comma b to. So I take chi q of delta to the minus one. So um, that's the, the inverse of this one here. Um, and I apply, apply this to A. So what do I get? I get an element in here. And then I apply this to B. So um, this, I claim, is a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. So, um, well, symm symmetry follows from this and um, it's clearly bilinear and uh, it's non-degenerate because uh, this here was an isomorphism. So, so why did I do all of this? Um, I claim that this here actually computes the A1 degree of this map F I wrote down at the beginning. So, the class of this phi, or the class, this is the class of phi um, in GW of K is the a one degree of my map F.
So why is that? Um, so let's let's prove this. So let m1 through ms be um, the maximal ideals corresponding to the zeros of f. Um, what I can do then is I can write Q as the direct sum of the localizations like this. And you can also show that my form splits up as the direct sum of forms. Let me call them phi i. And how do you construct this phi i? Well, you can just do the same construction as here. Just replace this Q with the localized Q and you get the same thing and it still works. So this is basically the same thing. So where phi i is uh, the non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form on QMI uh, constructed in the exact same way. So this whole construction still works. And now um, the claim follows from the following theorem. Um, this is a work by um, Tom Bachmann and Kirsten Wickelgram. And they show that um, the local degree at, at like a zero, let me just call it mi, this is the zero of the maximal ideal corresponding to the, the, the point of f is equal to this class phi, this shear storage construction in GWK. So the real proof of this, this claim reduces to their work. So this is where the magic happens. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is I know what my degree should be. It's this, this phi. So I have to stare at this Schiehr Storch construction to figure out how this phi can be computed easily. So let's try to do that. I would be great to have like a big blackboard now, so I don't always have to go back and forth, but uh, yeah, we'll be okay. For this phi. So um, as I said, this formula was really inspired, we found was really inspired by um, Kazanas work where he computed the A1 degree um, as a Bezusian. Um, and we found a multivariate version of this Bezusian. So let me write this down. There is a multivariate version of the Bezusian. So let, let me just call it dij for now. So I do fi of y1 through yj minus one, xj through xn. Hopefully I have enough space minus fi of y1 by j xj plus one xn like this divided by xj minus yj. So this looks a little similar to what we did for the Bezusian. So um, if we only had one variable x and y um, this would, and when one F, this would pretty much look like, let me go back, this here, 
but now we just don't we just don't have this f, f zero. And then this is exactly the same. So if this was just a map from A1 to A1, this is actually, this would be the same. But now it looks a little more complicated. Um, so where does this live? This is in K, X1, Xn, Y1, Yn. Um, and now I want to define what I mean by Misusian. This should be the image of the determinant dij of this in, again, q tensor q. And q is still like before q was kx1 through xn, f1 through fn, this here. So now we can choose a k vector space basis let me call it maybe A1 through AM for, for Q. I mean, Q is a finite dimensional, um, it's a K vector space. It's a finite K algebra because we assumed it was a complete intersection. And then I can write this, what I call Bezusian, this determinant as a sum i a comma j is equal to one to m b i j a i tensor a j because I mean this will be a basis for the for the tensor product and now there is this matrix b i j and it turns out this is actually symmetric so. Theorem um, this is actually the, the, the grain matrix for, for the A1 degree. So let me just write it out. So I assume F um, has only isolated zeros. So it, this is a complete intersection. Then Bij is um, the ground matrix for the for a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form representing my A1 degree. The proof is really not hard. It's some nice commutative algebra. Um, the hard work was, as I said, already done in this uh, bachmann um paper. So I, I can show you the proof of this. Um, so let's do the proof. So, yeah. Just a quick question before. Yes. So in particular, again, uh, this doesn't depend on the choice of the basis, right? Uh, this doesn't, um, no, this doesn't depend on the choice of the basis. Yeah, so I mean, it, so it, um, the basis, so this will be a ground matrix in, in this chosen basis. Like, you, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. So, I mean, yeah. If you choose a different basis, you'll get a different ground matrix. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I, I, I can, yeah. I can say, say this with respect to the basis A1 AM. Okay. Can you briefly say, I mean, this, this is for sure recovers this Casanova result. Can you briefly say something about this? Uh, about the, the proof or? No, no I mean, for the for Casanova result, you do the same, right? Yeah. You just have only one variable. And I mean, uh, the, in his result, you, 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 you take this power x to the power y, uh, x to the power y, and mm -hmm. y to the power j, and then you get this bezos. Yeah. yeah. 
and how can I see it here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I get your question. Great question. So, um, so uh, what you always have uh, for the, the Casanavi result is, um, so you have um, only one variable. So you have like K of X. So let me postpone the proof. Um, and, uh, and then you have, um, Let's just do the one variable case. So you have like a mod f, um, and that, let's assume this is a, a k vector space. Yeah, this should always be a k vector space, like a finite dimensional k vector space. Then you can always find a uh, a basis consisting of monomials. So it's like one um, x and so on until like x to the um, m minus one, and this is like the a one. This is the a m. Um, and we took uh, we we ran over the coefficients of x uh, x i y j, and this is exactly this here, in the one variable case. Okay. Yeah. I think. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for pointing this out. Um, uh, okay. So I want to say that this is actually the ground matrix for the a one degree. So. Let's go back to the whole um, definition of this phi. So the first thing we needed was um, we had this the kernel of this multiplication map. It was generated by those guys, and we needed those delta ij such that we have this equation. So maybe I know this is cheating, but let me copy this here. So the first thing we need for the proof is we need delta ij in k x1 xn y1 yn such that um, this equality holds. And Alexei already pointed out that this is not unique, but uh, Shea and Stoys proved that this doesn't matter. So we just have to find some and um, observation, we can choose those dij. So maybe I should go back to the definition of the dij. Uh, it would be great to have them in one. No, this doesn't work. So here's the dij. Those are defined like this. So you go until here, until here. And um, if you plug them in here, this xj minus yj cancels, this one here. And you're left with a telescoping sum and only the first and the last stay. Yeah. The first one is from x1 through xn, and the last one is from uh, y1 through yn. So that's great. So this trick was a telescoping sum. So be, because we already got like very easy choice of those delta ij. So now what's the, the next thing? Then um, the next thing in the cs Deutsch construction was we took, bro was this quotient map of this, the determinant of the delta ij and called this delta. And now this is just what I called the solution earlier. this guy here. And the position I wrote like this. Okay. But we'll get there. So um, now let AI dual, so AI is still our basis, um, be the element in here, okay, such that, well, AI dual of AJ, it's so just really like the dual to ai is, let me write this as delta ij. So this is one if j is equal to i, or it is zero else. Okay, why do I need this? So um, remember this phi was the following bilinear form. Um, I don't know, maybe let, let me call it, oh, what are good letters? C comma d, we haven't used c comma d. 
what did it do? It, it would um, take psi q of delta to the minus one um, of c and apply it to, to d. So this was an element in a, a, a homomorphism from, or a k linear map from q to, to k. Okay. So, um, so we want to see what this is. So, psi q of, of delta, let's apply this to our AI dual. So, what is this? So, okay. Let me just um, recall what this was. Maybe this is a little too much notation. So, this was. Um, well, this was a map from home k to k to q. What did it do? It sends phi to um, the following. Um, so our delta, let me write this as, I should have done this earlier, sorry. As a sum of a i b i. Ah. I'm so sorry. So, okay, let me start from, from the beginning. So those A, oh, sorry. Those AI were the basis for Q. So A1 through AM was the basis for Q. And um, so this is like the sum of the BIJ, AJ. I just put them together and call it BI, just like this. So earlier I wrote my position, which was equal to the delta. We've already seen that as this here. And now I just um, call my bi, uh, bij of ai, aj. And now I can say what um, this psi q from delta does per definition. Um, this sends an, an element phi to sum of phi ai bi. That was the very first definition of this natural isomorphism phi. It sent, um, we, we took an a tensor b and and if I apply psi q to this, I will send, um, I will send phi to phi of a times b. Ah. Okay, so this was just the definition. So let's see, what does it do to my ai? So this is the sum of ai dual aj bj j equal one to m but i already said this was the chronica delta so this is just bj so that's what i wanted to say so this one sends my ai dual to bj so now i can tell you what this non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form actually does. So, I'm just saying that if I take the inverse of this, of B, oh, this is B, B, I, of B, I, I get A, I dual. So, phi of, um, B i comma A i is equal to, so this is just the definition applied to A j ah, this would be a j and this is just the um, A i dual A j so this is the chronica delta and now I use the, the linearity to say that this is actually the same as, um, let's start at S is equal to one through M, B I S phi of A S A J like this. So, okay. Maybe everyone should like do all those steps by themselves. But what I've just calculated is that this sum here, B I S, uh, phi of a s a j is the chronica delta. In other words, 
if I multiply the, the, the matrix Bij with this matrix, I get the identity matrix. So, oopsie. So, um, Bij, this matrix to the minus one, is the inverse of this matrix, Ai, Aj. But what is this? This is nothing else um, than the ground matrix of pi with respect to the spaces. So this Bij is the inverse um, to, to the ground matrix. But in, in GW, the class, let me just say, like the class of this Bij is the same as the class of, of pi. Why is that? Well, if we just look at, we can diagonalize it. And if we do look at degree one forms, then A is the same as one over A in GW, because I can just multiply by, by square, because this is, um, well, if we, have, if we have characteristic not two, this is just a quadratic form, so I can um, always replace x by ax, so those, those are actually the same. And that's why <laughs> this gives you the ground matrix. Maybe I should do an example so you can see how, how nice you can um, calculate this. And also, let's do an example of something we weren't able to comp uh, compute before. So example. So. Um, I said that there were formulas for whenever the, the zeros, uh, the residue fields of the zeros of the map F um, were separable. So let's take something that is not separable. So I take P and odd prime, and I let K be FP and adjoin the T, and I take F to be F1, F2, from A2 to A2, and F1, F2 should be X1 to the P minus T, X, X1, X2. So um, we need to compute those delta IJ, or I also call them DIJ, but then I said they can chosen to be the same. So delta 1, 1, what is this? Should maybe get the formula. That was our formula. So that was our delta ij. So delta one one would be x one to the p minus t minus y one to the p minus t over x1 minus y1, delta 1, 2 is just y1 to the p minus t minus y1 to the p minus t um, x2 minus y2, but this is just zero. Then delta 2, 1 is x1 um, x2 minus y2 x2 over um, y1 x2 over x1 minus y1, which is just x2, and delta 2 2 is y1 x2 minus y1 y2 um, x2 minus y2. This is y1. So our delta or our Bezusian is the determinant of x1 to the p minus y1 to the p over x1 minus y1. You have an x2, you have the y1, you have a zero. So this is the same as um, y1 times x1 to the p minus one plus y1 squared x1 to the p minus two 
y1 to the p minus one times x1 uh, plus y1 to the p. So this is not very symmetric. Um, like it's, it's symmetric until here, um, but this one here in Q in, in mod the ideal generated by a bond in F2, this is just T or in Q tensor Q. This just follows from here. Y1 to the P is just T. So I can write down my matrix now. It looks like, like the following. So this is T, so I have a T here. So here's the one. You take uh, X1 and so on and so forth until X1 to the P minus one. And here I do the same with the Ys. So I get all zero here and I get a lot of ones here and here I get zeros. So as an element of growth in the grid, this would be I get a T plus P minus one over two times the hyperbolic form. So this was uh, yeah, rather easy to calculate and it also works for non circular field extensions. Okay. Um, so I still have half an hour. So I can, uh, I can talk about some nice applications of this. Um, okay, so let's use this in the setting of A1 enumerative geometry. Um, and this is now uh, based on work by uh, Jesse Kassen, uh, Kirsten Wickergren. So they define the following um, order number. So Kass Wickergren. Um, for X a smooth and proper K variety of dimension N. Um, and uh, let this be a rank uh, N vector bundle, VB for vector bundle. That is, um, we need some orientation and they, they introduce the notion of relatively oriented. So relatively oriented. Um, what does that mean? Um, well, what you need is you need an isomorphism, let me call it rho, from the determinant bundle of the tangent bundle on x to the minus one tensor, the determinant bundle v to um, a square of a line bundle. So this here is a line bundle. Um, and let sigma um, be a section with only isolated zeros. Because then we can define the following. Um, the A1 Euler number can be defined as follows. Let me denote it by N A1 V, and it also depends on our relative orientation rho. I mean, this doesn't always work, but if it works, we can define the Euler number like this. Um, to be the sum over the the zeros of this section I chose, those were all uh, isolated by assumption, um, of certain local A1 degrees. 
So does this depends on sigma and our relative orientation. So I don't want to really define this in, in very detailed way, how, how you can define this, this local A1 degree. This should really look like the local A1 degree. So um, you choose coordinates around your zero x in, in, in x and a trivialization and those two should be compatible with this relative orientation so let me try to write down what this means so this is um this should be the local a1 degree um like in after choosing co coordinates um around x the zero x and a trivialization such that all of this um, of, of the such that all of this is compatible with with our relative orientation. So what do I mean by compatible? My coordinates will give me so if I take the wedge pro uh, product of the coordinates, this gives me a, a distinguished element of this. My trivialization gives me a distinguished uh, element of this, and I want the image of this distinguished element I get like this in here to be a square. Because if I have a square, I already showed you in the proof um, in growth and degrade, this is actually the same. So this is actually well defined. Yeah, you can look at their work to get the precise definition. This is pretty so, but it's just you have locally you choose coordinates you get um, with the trivialization a map from an to an and you take the a1 degree but you have to watch orientations so in gwk um so of course um it's absolutely not clear why in this definition i didn't write down my sigma so uh let me say, I already mentioned this paper by Tom and, and Kirsten, um, and they show that this is really always independent of the choice of section. So this really doesn't depend on sigma. So, um, and let me mention the famous example uh, Jesse and Kirsten computed with this definition why they developed all this theory. Um, they they enriched the count of lines on a cubic surfle, uh, surface in, in growth and the grid and got the following. So they got an arithmetic count of lines on a cubic surface. So this count is, is the computation of such an Euler number of a certain vector bundle. Um, so the vector bundle is the following. It's sim 3 s dual Grassmannian 2, 4. So this is the tautological bundle on the Grassmannian. Um, and, and this is the vector bundle. Well, if you know what it is, that's, that's great. If not, I'm not going into details here. I'm doing a different example. But this will be 12 times the form one plus uh, 15 times the form one plus 12 times the form minus one in GW of K. And um, if you take the rank of this, so the rank is just the size of the matrix, let's say, you had 15 times uh, 15 plus 12, that's 27, that's the classical count over, over the, the complex numbers, for example. Okay. But let me do, uh, let me try to use my theorem to compute another Euler number. This was a little too big for me, the 27, because I want to do it by hand. Namely, I want to compute an A1 Euler characteristic. There are different definitions for, for this one too, but one definition that works is um, if you have X a smooth and proper K variety, then the Euler characteristic of X should really be this Euler number of Tx. And now I don't need to write down a, a um, relative orientation row because this is canonically 
relatively oriented because this debt tx is just, or this debt b is just the determinant of tx. So this is just trivial. So I can omit this like this. So we can define the Euler characteristic like this. And I want to use my last 20 minutes to, to show you how to use um, this nice formula to compute an Euler characteristic. And the one I chose was um, I take projective space. Of course, most of you probably know this is already known. This is not a new result. This is just a different technique to, to compute it. And I think also this might not be the easiest technique, but it's a nice exercise. So I want to um, compute this Euler number of, of, uh, of, of the tangent bundle of um, uh, projective space. Um, so let L be a line in Kn plus one through zero. So like a one dimensional subspace. Um, and then we denote by brackets L the corresponding point in Pn. And then um, we all know that the tangent bundle, the fiber over this point is home from this one dimensional subspace of uh, Kn plus, plus one to, to here. Maybe I should not call it line, a one dimensional subspace. So this is confusing because I was talking about lines earlier, like this. So um, this is our fiber over the line. And I want to, so what do we need to, to write down compute this Euler number? We need a section. And let me tell you how to get a section. Um, I just choose sigma one to sigma n in kx0 to xn, and they should be homogeneous of degree one. And I claim that these define a section. Let me call it sigma of tx in the following way. Um, sigma of L, what should this be? Well, it is a map from L into uh, Kn plus one and then take the quotient. So I just um, take sigma zero restricted to my subspace sigma n like this. So this is how I get a section of, uh, of my tangent bundle. And now I, I tried a little bit to find a particularly nice section, which only has isolated zeros. And I found a nice one, namely sigma zero is minus xn, sigma one is minus x zero. And then I just go up one and it's minus xn minus one, like this. And um, I need to choose coordinates. Um, so what do I mean by that? I'll just choose a, an open up by subspace in, in Pn and I got lucky and all the zeros lie in there. So I take a n, I, I define, um, I identify u zero, that means x zero is not equal to, to, to zero with a n in here. And I restrict my section to this u zero and then it trivializes. So sigma u zero trivializes to the following. Let me just write, maybe write down to what it trivializes. Now I only have x one through um, xn. I, yeah, I, I omit my x zero. This should be chosen to be one. Um, so what is this? This should be a, a sigma one, one x1 to xn minus x1 sigma zero one. So maybe I'll explain where this comes from. This pretty much comes from modding out this, this line L. And uh, so on and so forth, sigma n one minus xn sigma zero like this. So, um, yeah. 
I can I can try to explain why this makes sense. So we want to do mod mod L and L is of the form. Well, it's all lambda. Let, let me lump that lambda not be zero, and then it's like lambda x one x one through x n. So mod L is I want in the first thing I want zero, so I subtract sigma zero, and then I have to subtract sigma zero times x one here and sigma n zero times x n in the last one. So that's how you get the section. Um, so let me write down what this is. So this is minus one plus x one x n minus x one x two x plus x two x n and minus x n minus one plus x n squared. Um, and we want to compute or oh, want to compute shy one um, this Euler characteristic of p n, and this is just the this a one degree of this restriction and trivialization. So let's use the last fifteen minutes to compute this. So we need those delta i j again. You put question. How yeah. many zeros does it have? Excuse me? Uh, how many zeros does it have? How, how many? I got lucky. Uh, it should be n plus one. Okay. I got lucky. You're right. I mean, it was, um, this is, uh, uh, you really have to, to check that in the complement there are no, no zeros in this P1. But I got lucky and they're all in here and, the, um, and we have finitely many. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, okay, uh, let's just. So, we want our Bezusian that was the determinant of those delta ij. So, this was the determinant of the following. Let me just write it down. Here we'll get an xn. Where does this come from? Um, I have. Um, this here minus y1 xn and divided by x1 minus y1 gives me the xn and I will get xn for almost all the diagonal of it except for the last one because here I have an xn squared so I get I have xn squared minus yn squared divided by xn minus yn which gives me an xn plus yn then one below the diagonal, um, here I get nothing, but here I will get minus, here I will get minus ones for this, for this one here. So here I get minus ones, all of here I get zero. And then um, I claim that I get the y1 here until yn minus one here and all zeros here. Um, yeah, this y1 also comes from here. Um, and now, what's the determinant of this? Um, well, you can show inductively that it's like the following. Well, you take this here times the determinant of this without the y1 like this. Um, and this you do by induction plus the determinant of this here times, ah, this down here. So there's a lot of minus ones on the uh, um, down here and the y1 and actually the minus ones will always, you will always get a one, so you get a y1. And the next one you will get an xn times y2 and then you get an xn squared y3. This is a simple exercise by induction until you get to xn n minus one yn plus x n to the n. So now we want to look at the image in this Q tensor Q. So mod the ideal um, span band by this. And I claim that this is the following. So I, I hear this, this here I, I keep. Um, and this here I keep, but then 
the y and uh, x n squared I can replace by x n minus one, y three, and it turns out um, the next one would be x n minus two, y four, and so on and so forth, until you get to x two y n um, minus uh, y n yeah. Like what? Sorry. Plus x1. Yeah, like this. Okay. So um, if you write down the coefficients of the of those this matrix, Bij. Um, so the so so a, a basis would just be um, I guess x1, x2 uh, through xn and the one. If you write down the coefficients, this is very anti-symmetric, so you get the anti-diagonal. So you get all the ones here, like this here. And in, in growth in the grid, what is this? So, is, well, if n is odd, so this is size n plus one, what I get is, n plus one over two times the hyperbolic form. And if n is even, I get n times the hyperbolic and half times the hyperbolic form plus a one like this. Yeah, of course this is known, but this is a nice exercise to, to calculate this again, if you like calculations. Okay, that's uh, all I have prepared. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. It looks very interesting. Uh, quick question. Uh, can you somehow compute the Euler characteristic for, for a hypersurface, say? For a hypersurface. The problem is um, Pn is, is really nice um, because uh, you, you get this those coordinates here for free. You have this. Um, U zero in, in, in P and K, so you have immediately have an A, um, A, A N. For a hypersurface, what you would have to do is, so um, you need hypersurface, for example, or for something where you don't have A N so as open affine, so you can always, then you need, uh, you would need Nisnevich coordinates. around your zeros. So what does this mean? So you have a zero um, of your section of the, of the tangent bundle and uh, you need a Zariski open neighborhood, let me call the hypersurface X U of X um, plus an Natal map psi u to a n. Be why, why do you want an Natal map? Then you get um, an isomorphism on the tangent space and you can write down this differential you, you'll need in the end. So, um, and, but you have to be careful that the residue, it works with the residue field such that um, psi induces, because otherwise you have some traces in there and then this messes up everything an isomorphism on, on Kx. So I think this would be like the difficulty here, finding like Nice-Navich coordinates for, for every zero. I know they exist. I think uh, uh, you, you might know too. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I know that they exist, but um, well. Yeah, for explicit hyperforces, it could be quite difficult to write. Yeah, so I kind of, that's that, that's why I didn't want to, or I don't really know how to to do that. Maybe maybe for a particularly nice example, but here it was really easy. So if whenever you have like your your space built out of uh, a n's, you can do this. But on the other hand, I think there are easier methods to compute the other characters in this case. So this was really not very useful for this. 